It's Mark, and uh, it is time to start our live show. And uh, so it's been um, kind of a crazy week for me. I've been um, digging a giant mound of dirt in our front yard and trying to level uh, our backyard. So it's been, um, I think I, I probably moved about 20 or 2,000 pounds of dirt today in a wheelbarrow. So um, I'm a little bit sore. But uh, we're going to start the show, and um, let's see. So uh, I've got a lot of stuff lined up, actually, tonight. Um, first things first, uh, let's see here. Uh, a little reminder for everybody. Now, if you are starting to get involved in our monthly challenges, uh, we've got about, I think, a week left, is it? Let me see here. So um, April 6th is our deadline for the next challenge so actually uh two weeks left two weeks but um two weeks is not a lot of time so if you guys haven't started definitely check that out and uh to find out more i gotta i gotta reply to tron kitty here later on but um to find out more go into our forums and check out our monthly challenge section here and you will see that the next challenge topic is spin so uh, essentially, you can make up any kind of uh, you know theme around spin. It could be anything from a person spinning, a robot, a UFO, or you know who knows. Um, but anything as long as it's stop motion is fair game. So uh, it's a definitely a fun contest. And uh, like I say, there's about two weeks left. So get started if you haven't. And let's see. So we've had some changes on our. Um, our live shows now all our previously recorded shows what I've done is I've numbered them so if you guys are uh, checking out our YouTube channel uh, you will notice that our show tonight is number 56 so now we've done a lot more shows than that we've done you know probably uh, I don't know 200 shows before the first one was uploaded to YouTube uh, we used live stream and, and other services before YouTube allowed you to, to live stream. And YouTube is by far, you know, the best one. Um, it's a little bit weird how they always get me on copyright stuff all the time. But it's, you know, so it's kind of hard to, to load up videos without getting flagged and um, having ads put on our, our live shows by other content creators. But it is fair, I suppose, you know, if you create something and we, you know, we show it on the show to uh, get credit for it which we always give credit anyway but uh, now you can make money off us so <laughs> um, so the other thing that I've done on all our live shows is you know every time we we start up uh, we start early because you know we want to give people time to, to join in before the show and, and kind of talk a little bit and ask questions and uh, for example tonight um, Janet had mentioned that she wants to talk about the neverhood and also a uh, a video for uh, let me see here what is it called again uh, she said uh, what do you think about the new stop motion ever after high music video from Mattel so uh, we loaded that up we're gonna watch it tonight and um, so of course you know it's it's kinda nice to have these little chats before the show because it it gives me the ability to know what you guys want to talk about so the problem though is when you rewatch the show Nobody really wants to sit around for a really long time and, and watch this chat. So what I've done is I've added these little graphic logos here. And uh, these things here just let you know, like, okay, the show actually starts at 14 minutes and 30 seconds. So you can go in here and you can skip ahead to, you know, 14 minutes and 30 seconds. And that's when the show starts. Um, so that's pretty much the big change. Uh, we've also... You know, we've put these graphics on there, live stop motion show number like 54, you can see in the sidebar. And um, so those are our live shows. It just kind of makes it easier to find and easier to, you know, not have to figure out, you know, when does the show start here? So it's a lot quicker for everybody and hopefully a better experience. Hopefully. <laughs> but then you got to listen to my, my sort of nasally voice. So I don't know if that's a good experience. But um, so uh, moving forward... Uh, let's see. I got a lot of stuff here, but uh, my friend uh, Webster. I actually worked for Webster Colcord in the mid '90s, I guess. And he's starting up a new studio, and he's going to do this for about six months. And his studio is called Trick Eye Films, and 
you know, he's kind of had this um, this site for a long time, but he's never actually you know pushed what he does. And um, so I just kind of want to show everybody out there if you're watching this, if you need somebody to do some clan animation work as a service that he has. Um, Trick Guy Films is actually you know Webster does some really amazing handcrafted clan animation um, that is extremely unique. And you know you can see here he's also got some got this robot that he worked with. Um, I think uh, I think Anthony Scott animated that robot. Um, what was it called again? I can't remember the name of that robot now. But uh, anyway, he's got some contact information and a Vimeo page and a Facebook and also a brand new Instagram. So he kind of shows off some of his work and what he's been up to. And he he's been doing digital work. I think the last film project he worked with was Deadpool, which is a really big big well-known character if you're into comics and um so he i believe did a lot of you know digital stuff which that's that's pretty much his bread and butter but he's always had this passion for stop motion and so he's got you know lots of um he's worked with les claypool from primus so these are some of his videos and uh what else can't really say much more than that um you know but uh let me see if i can Check out his Facebook page. Maybe there's something on here. Something different. Uh, okay, so he's got some GIF files on here. Which aren't loading. <laughs> yeah, my internet connection has been a bit slow, so I apologize for that. Yeah, Don Carlson. Hmm, you know, Don Carlson is... Uh, he makes Puppet Putty, and Webster Callcord has been using some of his puppy, Puppet Putty. <laughs> and uh, I, I think what he's doing is he's mixing in Puppet Putty with Van Aken to make it more firm and less susceptible to melting. So you can see here he's got this cool little rooster, sort of like a clay on glass thing going on here. And uh, here he is animating Les Claypool from, for Primus for the video. And obviously he's going to, you know, he would cut this off here so you don't know that he's missing his legs. But um, he put this whole thing on a rig, as you can see, to, to animate him. And it's so rare to find anybody else, you know, doing clay animation work. It's, it's just, Webster really has a, a real gift for it. And, and I guess that's about all I'm going to say about that. So uh, Trick Eye Films, check it out if anybody needs any sort of station IDs or any kind of uh, commercials or web web based animations all right and if you want to find it it's at trickifilms.com okay what else um, so I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not but on our our fan page I posted a link and the link goes to a page on reddit.com so if you scroll down not too far but you can see the reddit character here and you click on that click on the link and the cool thing is you can get 16 gigabytes of high quality sound effects for free and what's cool about this is that even if you're doing a commercial project as long as um, you know you don't uh, like sell the the files, the sound files, you can pretty much do whatever you want with them. I checked out their license, and it's really a, a license that is so broad that you can almost do whatever you want with it. Um, I think the the only thing you can't do is you know put it on a CD and sell it and make money. So uh, <laughs> it's uh, it's actually pretty cool. And so there's a, a website, there's a license, and a torrent, and I believe down here. Um, somebody posted where you can get even more free files from the same company where they've released these before. So um, you can find it, I believe, in this link. So it requires a little bit of clicking around and, and searching, but if you can, uh, if you have a little bit of patience, you can find out, um, you know, what they've got. And they've got gun sounds. They've got, you know, monster, zombie, vocal, pig. Uh, around bridges, city traffic, computer noises, 
Humbuzz, um, stuff that I've, I haven't downloaded all these because I don't think I have enough space personally, but um, you've got industrial sounds, you've got uh, borax equipment, I'm not sure what that is, a Foley session, hits and, and whooshes, so sci-fi invaders, I mean these are things that would really work great for anybody's projects. So uh, you know, check it out, try, try to find the link if you don't know where to find it. Um, our uh, our fan page, the way you can look it up is just check out uh, or search for it, animateclay.com fan page, and it should pop up. So it shouldn't be too hard to find it. Um, the URL is on Facebook, but the the site where you can find it, well, let's see. Let's load it up here. So it's, um, okay, it's not too hard. It's uh, sonis.com, which is S-O-N-N-I-S-S dot com. And then there's a forward slash game audio G as in like God, D as in dog, C as in captain, and then 2016. So sonus.com forward slash game audio GDC 2016. And that's where you can download it. So let's, uh, I'll open it up here so you can look at it and see. So here is what it looks like, and you can see uh, this is the second bundle. So the one before it, you'll have to find on reddit.com. Actually, I could probably post a link to that. Let me let me go on here real quick. And let's see. So I'll post this as a comment. I'll say, here's the first part, and there's the link. So these are even more um, more sounds. Now hopefully this will work. There we go. Yep. Okay, so the reply, just click on that and you get, like I think that's like 26 gigabytes of free sound effects. <laughs> so pretty amazing. So I think pretty much if you want to download this kind of stuff, you should get a spare hard drive and you know load it all up on there. And so yeah. So hopefully Nick, um, hopefully Nick, you can find that now. <laughs> um. Yeah. So gamesounds.xyz also has a redirect according to Beard Botnik. That's good to know. So gamesounds.xyz, okay, excellent. And uh, there's a, a, if you go on the Reddit link, you can see there's some sort of preview page where you can, um, let me see if I click on this, what happens. Let's do one of these real quick. are actually really helpful I think I, I kind of wish the other one was like that too because you can click on the preview and then you can download it which uh, which is very very helpful because that kind of frees up um, you know you can sort of listen and if you like it download it instead of downloading something that will take you a whole day to download um, let me see here if there's anything else like here's trash ultra drones Let's see what this one sounds like creepy sort of ambient sound that you could put in sort of like a zombie or a horror flick or, or something like that. See, I was thinking when it says drone, it would be like a drone with propellers, you know, one of those things, but completely different. <laughs> All right. Now pause that one there. 
So there's a ton of sounds on here, a ton of sounds, and each one opens up into more sounds. So I don't know what the total number is there, but it's a lot. It's got machine guns, all kinds of stuff. So this is all I, I believe for um, you know video games, of course, and probably a first-person shooter, I'm guessing, but I don't really know. Um, so it is possible that you're, if somebody has played the video games where they use these sounds and they see your video, they're going to say, oh, that sounds kind of familiar. All right. Yeah, that's weird, Nick. Um, I wonder if they might have some sort of, like some sites, they block you if you're in another country. What do they call that? Um, So here, so it looks like if you go to the, the sonus.com game audio GDC 2016, they've got several ways to download it. It looks like they've got a mirror, so some sort of uh, website that somebody owns, server on, uh, direct links, they've got a Usenet, a torrent, Google Drive, and Dropbox. And at this one, the first one, I believe, or is this like, this is this first or second? It says it's a 10 gigabyte bundle. Um, or no, it says if you missed a 10 gigabyte bundle. So this one is actually 16 gigabytes. Um, they've got a Facebook page as well. So I don't know if, I don't know if there's any information here about that. Let's see. Ah, okay. Now it's just a, a link saying that you can you can download it. I wish I could post it in the in the comment section here, but it won't let me. <laughs> yeah, Peter would probably like that, right? All the machine guns and maybe the drones too. The drones were kind of cool. All right. So what else? Um, so like I say, the the link is on our fan page. So if anybody has a hard time finding it, just do a search for animateclay.com fan page and scroll down and you should find it. Okay. Um, now, uh, maybe I should mention this. Uh, Henry had mentioned, I don't know if Henry, oh, there you are. Henry's here. Uh, Henry had mentioned that he had 3D printed out one of our flying rigs for bendies and he asked me, what kind of hardware do you need for these bendy flying rigs? And by the way, Henry, I think you were the one that you asked me to make them in black. You said that black flying rigs would be smart because you won't see them so easily. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to talk about that now, Henry. Um, so I made some changes to the rigs. Uh, first off, I've got lots of colors now. I've got also black. And I'm also adding in these rig connectors for free with the... With the um, which Henry, you're gonna need one of those. If you're gonna if you're gonna make your puppet fly, you need one of the rig connectors for the end, and it comes with um, two of these little machine screws. So I'm adding those for free because I found that when people buy the rigs and they buy the 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 bendies armature kits, they don't know that they need these. <laughs> I made them separate because I figured if people don't buy the if they just buy the rig they won't need these and if they just get the puppet they won't need this so I let them separate but now I'm, I'm adding them on because people are buying them together so uh, um, so yeah the hardware now this these uh, stainless steel threaded uh, machine screws are M4 in size and so when you uh, if you build the rig let's see if I can make this bigger what I'm using are those, and they're really short. I think they're like 10 millimeters long. And then I'm using these little uh, wing nuts. That's all they are is wing nuts. And they go on there, and they're also the same, obviously M4. So any sort of M4 rod will fit through all of these holes in the rig. Now the, the lower holes, they might not, because it, it'll only fit in the one where it pivots, but it will not fit in probably all these other holes because these are designed for wire 
and the wire is uh, three strands, two strands, and one strand of one sixteenth inch wire. So, yeah, and you know, I I used black because that was your suggestion, and I thought that was pretty smart. So I've got black, and it's not really flat; it's a little bit shiny. But I found that, like, if you look at the picture here, you can see this is black. Um, even there's a even though there's like a slight amount of shininess to it it's you know it's kind of hard to see like the back side and this part that comes up um, it's hard to distinguish what it is so i think if you put a black backdrop behind your character and then use the rig it'd be pretty tough to to see it oh okay so you did print out a connector that's cool well uh, show me your results you know upload a video sometime and, and let's see how it works <laughs> I'm interested in feedback because I really want to improve on these if I can. So I might have a, a you know version 2.0 in the future. So those are the bendy rigs. So yeah, I, I changed that. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna make um, the armature kits, the bendy kits. I might make one that's uh, a black one also. And I got some pink filament as well. So for some of the girls out there that want like a pink kit. Kind of a girly kit um i'm going to print out a couple of those as well so any other questions about that henry or um was that the only question you're ordering and i i buy mine in bulk all those parts on ebay stainless parts on ebay but i gotta buy like you know a large bag at one time <laughs> so it's a little expensive but so i don't think you're going to need more than uh, i think it's five or six wing nuts and m4 machine screws ah okay yeah you could always paint them you know if you wanted to if you wanted to paint either your armature kits or your rigs like a flat black i think flat black would definitely be the best option definitely um you would not be able to see it with some sort of uh, like a felt fabric behind there when you're animating it would be really difficult to to see the only thing you'd have to really um pay close attention to are the the wing nuts because they're they're shiny you know so you'd have to paint those as well but yeah you so henry is saying you could you know put it in um sand it down or put it in a tumbler with fine grains of sand i think that's what uh who is it shapeways does that with some of their parts They'll actually tumble the parts to make them more of a mat or, or flat. Like the longer you keep it in there, the more flat it becomes, I guess. <laughs> so you won't buy any until they become, until they're plaid? Okay. Well, in that case, hmm, maybe I can get a very expensive 3D printer and print it out that way. But uh, for now, I've got, I guess, well, how many colors? Yellow, red, orange, green, and blue. And so we'll soon have black and pink. And um, I'm also, I haven't had really time to work on it, but I'm also working on a, a dinosaur kit, which should be kind of fun. All right. And so Nick is saying he paints his rigs yellow so they stand out easier to erase them and tell which is puppet and which is rig. Well, in that case, we, we have, a, I believe, a, a yellow um, flying rig. I've got yellow and green and blue. Because that, that was my thinking, too. Like, if you if you have a, a blue screen or a green screen or yellow, you know, it's, it's easier to, to remove that way. But if your background is black and your rig is black, that's even less work. <laughs> well, not really, but kind of helps a little bit. Um, all right, so moving forward, um, now this is kind of a weird thing in that I, I found out this was posted on the 18th, and it was uh, posted by Rebecca Ford, and she writes that Michael Jackson chimp script Bubbles is set for a stop-motion animation film. And if you guys don't know already, um, Michael Jackson was a fan of stop-motion, and in fact, he was uh, a very big fan of the... Wolvinton claymation process and uh, back in the 1980s he was actually turned into a raisin a California raisin um, <clears throat> that's weird 
Um, let me go over here and see if I can show you guys. Let me go into my historic picture album. And go into Will Vinton. Where is it here? <clears throat> and I know I've got a picture of the Michael Jackson raisin here someplace. Let's see if I can find it. So I got just like a ton of pictures from then. Um, let's see. Just to show you guys what I'm looking at here. <clears throat> Here's some of the photo gallery, the photos in my gallery that I've got for Wolf Vinton Studios. And here's a a sculpture of Michael Jackson. And you can see he looks pretty much like Michael Jackson there. But there's one of him as a raisin. Here it is. So uh, believe it or not, you know Michael Jackson really wanted to be a California raisin, and he did a a little singing routine back in the you know the nineteen like I say nineteen eighties, or this might have been like maybe around nineteen ninety. Pretty sure this might have been like one of the last clay animation um, raisin commercials that they made. And uh, so I thought it was kind of interesting that they're making this new new film project. And it's called Bubbles. And uh, Dan Harrison and his Starburn Industries will produce the film, which is based on Isaac uh, Adamson's original screenplay that topped the 25 or, or 2015 bl um, blacklist. So let me see here. So it will be made using stop motion in the vein of Oscar nom nominated film Animalisa, directed by Duke Johnson and Charlie Kaufman. So I haven't seen any photos, but I would imagine that what they're trying to do is make it somewhat realistic looking and not so much like a cartoon. But then again, I don't know. Um, I haven't seen it. So, But uh, Adamson's original spec script topped the tw uh, 2015 blacklist. So what is this about here exactly? The blacklist. Do they mean as in black skin color, or do they mean you are blacklisted from something? I don't really know. Uh, it's a collection of Hollywood's best unproduced screenplays. All right, so I guess they have this whole big stack of screenplays that that um, they've sifted through, but they haven't been produced and. This one made it to the top somehow. And I wonder if it's because it's just Michael Jackson or because people like stop motion or, or what, but uh, that's interesting. Um, and so it says here that Bubbles was a frequent companion to the iconic singer in the 1980s, even joining Jackson on the Bad World Tour in Japan. As for the plot, the blacklist description of the script said, a baby chimp is adopted by pop star Michael Jackson Narrating his own story, Bubbles the Chimp details his life within the King of Pop's inner circle through the scandals that later rocked Jackson's life and eventually led to Bubbles' release. So I don't really know that whole story about Bubbles. I don't know about you guys, but um, evidently it sounds like they took Bubbles away from Michael Jackson. Uh, maybe somebody complained and said it was he was, you know, he should be in the wild or something. I don't know. Um, but Adamson and Lee Stabby will executive produce along with Harmon and Korchak as producers. CAA will represent the distribution rights of the film. And Har Harmon and Starburn Industries are repped by CAA. And Adamson is represented by CAA and manager Lee Stabby. So that's all I've got. That's, that's all I know about it. But it sounds like a serious... Seems like my computer is locking up here. All right. I'm gonna close this if it'll let me. Uh, why are you locking up on me, darn it? I can't do anything. <laughs> but anyway, I'll just let my computer do its thing here while I talk. Um, so it sounds kind of like a serious film. It doesn't sound like it's some kind of a you know, a joke or anything, or, or a comedy. Now, Janet says, I'm a big fan of Michael Jackson. 
And Dave says, there's something strange going on with my connection to the live show. Hmm. Let me, I'm going to have to do something real quick. Because my screen has locked up on me here. All right. This is not cool. Ah, uh, darn it. Well, if you guys are still watching, I had to load everything back up here. So, sorry about that. A slight technical glitch. And yeah. All right. Hopefully you're all still there. All right, looks like it's back. <laughs> all right, so can you guys still hear me? Uh, did everything return as back to normal or not now? That's the question. <laughs> all right, let me see here. And you guys. See and hear me. I think everybody can. But we'll we'll find out here. All right, great. That's the good thing about YouTube is everything comes back. All right, awesome. Ooh, okay. So, um. Still got lots to talk about, but uh, I wanted to show this real quick. Now, Brian Prosser sent this to me, and I think I might have shown this before, but it seems really awesome. And uh, this has got about 33,000 shares. So a lot of people like this. And uh, this is called The Maker. And it's from Nicodermus. Now, is Nicodermus... <laughs> Isn't Nicoderm like a smoking patch you put on your arm or something? Nicoderm. Um, Nicoderm has posted this, but it might not be from Nicodermus. Like a lot of times people will rip off people's videos, put them on Facebook, and then get lots of likes. You know, that's kind of the sad thing about the internet these days is you never know who the actual person is. But uh, we're going to watch this. It's only about five and a half minutes long, and it seems pretty cool. So. Let's get started. So there you have it, and so that was a really cool, somewhat thought-provoking film about time and how it goes away so fast. So I guess uh, there's some moral to the story there somewhere. Um, really neat. I, I think that the the lighting and the whole, you know, it's a short concept that probably didn't take you know too long to make compared to making like a feature. So uh, five and a half minutes long and neat character designs and you notice like there's a like the the violin holes in his head here oh, so we can pause it there so it's got like the little i don't know what they call those scrolly things but uh, he's sort of like a violin himself <laughs> so yeah behind the scenes are always fun and i'm sure on here somewhere we could find that but, uh, let me see or possibly not i'm not sure Yeah, you know, I think I should. What was that? Facebook.com slash the maker. What was that again? They had it in the credits. Let's see here. Ooh. And. Is that the very end? There we go. The maker film. Okay. Okay. 
Time maker movie. Okay, let's see. There it is. Yeah, it's, I probably should have watched the video or, or played the video directly from here because obviously some people are reposting it. Um, but yeah, let me see. How much time do we have? It's about 20 minutes. And I promised Janet we would talk about the Neverhood. <laughs> so uh, I probably won't show these now. Uh, so uh, Nick says, I have enough trouble just enjoying a stop mo film without thinking about how it's done. But behind the scenes are okay to see later. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure they've got lots of photos on here as well. So here's some of the designs. And it looks like the ultimate stop motion animation guide. I have not seen this. So uh, I'm gonna look at this later, actually. Sounds pretty good. But yeah, I like that film. Really nice. Ooh, okay, so. So The Neverhood. <laughs> so how, how many of you guys have played The Neverhood? Have you ever played it before? I played it when it came out. And I actually, I think I might still have the original CD somewhere, hidden someplace. So yeah, Janet had asked about this. And so last week, you know, we were talking a lot about video games and um, some of the clay animation that has been done for games. And The Neverhood is definitely one of the more famous games that you can you can find out there. Uh, claymation style characters designed by Duff. All right, so this is all talking, but we can watch and, and, and sort of go through um, what the game looked like. And at the time, Doug Naples was the guy who worked with Steven Spielberg on this project. And um, I forget how many like tons of clay. There's like some fact sheet about the neighborhood and how many tons of clay they used just to make it. And uh, this might be, this is Neverhood Chronicles. Yeah, so Clayman is this guy that goes around this create, you know, this universe, and um, it's a point and click adventure. And yeah, Doug Tenaple was his name, uh, Mike. And you know, this was one of those things where uh, I guess the only sort of games that were super popular back then would be like. Uh, Doom, um, make sure I pause this here, you know, Doom and Return to Castle Wolfenstein and those kind of games, and they were all very, very digital-esque looking, you know, like everything had a sort of pixelated look, um, Mario Brothers, you know, if you think of that, is, it's got like lots of pixelized square cube shape things that are everywhere, and people never really associated a more textural, realistic, and organic looking character as being possible to put in, into a video game. And um, so this is one of the first games out there that use clay. And uh, you can see there's you know some really cool animations of the clay man and he's pulling some level levers. And the whole idea of the, of the game is where you, you walk around the level and you have to figure out the combination of things to either pull or press or push um, to get through the game and it's just it was just a lot of fun you kind of explore the world and you can you can just like you know go wherever you want it's non non-linear I guess you could say for the most part yeah armor Krog. I've got that loaded up to show you guys also so you can see the <clears throat> see what came after but I think uh, after this, the next game that Doug Tenaple worked on was Skull Monkeys, which is was for a PlayStation, I think. It might have been actually for more than one one of the con game consoles, you know. But Skull Monkeys was one of them that I I used to play a lot, and I don't think I ever beat the game either. It was pretty hard, <laughs> if I remember right. But uh, it's really cool just to see the characters move around and, and animate and like the amount of character in all of these different poses is, is really strong and 
um, from what I remember, Doug Tenapel, what he did is he would draw all these animations on paper as like a 2, 2D slash 3D kind of concept. Something akin to um, Justin Rash is not like another guy that, that has that sort of 2D sort of stylistic animation that he adds to his characters when he, he animates them. Not really sure what Justin's been up to lately. We we interviewed him uh, twice, once uh, just by himself, and another time with his wife when they were working on their projects. And you know, if you've if you've got this ability to draw 2D characters and do 2D animation, a lot of times you'll you'll see stop motions that look almost like they're uh, like a Disney character as opposed to a strict you know clay puppet style if that makes any sense. So Janet says, I, I, I found this game today and never played it. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you can, I mean, I, I don't know, most modern computers probably can't play this anymore because it came out, I think in like 1999 or somewhere around there. It was pretty, pretty long ago already. So I don't know if any operating system can play it. But there might be emulations. They call them emulators. And a lot of times you can get like an emulator for Nintendo games and play, you know, or like even like um, Sega. Remember that, um, that game console, Sega? You could get emulators and download them and then download the data from the, the game cartridges. And sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Um, but people try to keep those games alive, which is kind of interesting. You know, like people spend a lot of time making, you know, with million dollar budgets, all these brand new video games. And then, you know, some group of people will go out there and spend all their time just trying to get these old games to work so that uh, the newer generations can find them and play them. And it amazes me if, if anybody, you know, still enjoy some of these older games um, like the Nintendo games and stuff compared to what's out there now. It seems like everything is done on a cell phone, you know, you have like as an app. They don't even call them um, games so much. It's like, you know, do you have this app? So things are really different from, from back then. And in the 90s, you know, computers and the internet were so new. Nobody really... Uh, even had this concept in their heads that you can play something on a handheld device with such amazing clarity as you can these days. I mean, I used to have a a Game Boy and it was so cheesy. Like if looking back at it, like the there was like, you know, a, a 100 by 100 pixel screen on there and everything was black and white and you had to have like this special light that you can strap on the top of it to play it in the dark and you know, the batteries were giant and um, you get these battery packs that were really heavy. So nowadays, all right, not really sure if it's going to work. Let's see what happens here. All right. <laughs> and it looks like uh it looks like my internet connection came back. Okay. Well, sorry about that guys. Um my internet connection died there and I got some sort of uh crazy screens here and my my phone which I use Wi-Fi it said that AT&T was doing something so and that stinks all right so I'm not really sure if this is going to be a continuation of my previous broadcast and it will just stream properly or what um, so it's like uh, we still have 10 viewers amazing <laughs> surprised you guys stuck it out okay well, um, let's move on then here. Uh, so that was the neighborhood, and I'll just pretend like nothing ever happened there, uh, since you can hear me now. Um, and uh, let's see. So Armacrog is the latest version. Well, not really version, but the latest 
creation from Doug to Naple. And this was a, a crowdfunded project, which is really an amazing uh, thing and an amazing feat that anybody could even, you know, raise a lot of funds for another type of uh, game along the same lines as Neverhood. And um, so we're going to watch uh, some footage. Let me see if I can open this up in a new window to make it large. <laughs> so Armacrog. So this came out in 2014, and this says it's a work in progress, but they have uh, they did complete this project. So uh, let's watch. It's only three, three minutes long, so... Okay, Beak Beak. I'm just glad we're still alive. Mm, yeah, me too. Now, let's get a look at the hull. Yeah, this does not look good. I don't think our pot insurance is gonna cover this. Our deductible is nuts too. Beak Beak, look at that. What do you make of this guy? Ooh, an omelet. <laughs> Ooh. That's Armacrog, and compared to the Neverhood, it's obviously much better in terms of um, the quality of the, the imagery and maybe even the animation. And the character designs are really good, and just the whole thing is just a lot of it's a lot of fun. And so, in order to get it, uh, I believe you can get this on Steam, and that's what I would probably use. Um, you just download Steam, and you can find it on there and, and buy it. Um, it's a pretty straightforward process, uh, but there's other places as well. There's one, Green Man Gaming as well, so let's click on this. And it's about $24.99 here, which isn't too bad. And uh, let's see here. All right, but it still requires Steam as well to to buy it, so it's probably just better to go to Steam directly. <laughs> I don't see why they need that, but maybe for, um, what do you call it, uh, so people can't pirate the game. I think that you, with Steam, they, they have some anti, 
pirating things on there. But really awesome characters. I don't know if you guys have played this before. I have not played it. But if um, if I had the time, I probably would. Let's see if I can... Let's see here. Gallery. Here we go. Oh, okay. It's all on one page. <laughs> that there might be more pictures and some behind-the-scenes pictures, but I guess not. Hmm... Gallery about press the team. Hey, micro points, how's it going? And oh, Ron Cole is saying that. By the way, I confirmed that real smart motion blur works with Natron, free ed editing platform. Awesome. Yeah, we talked about that. What about uh, two weeks ago or so? That's a really neat program. It seems like. All right. Well, anyways, uh, it is 9 o'clock, everybody, so we are going to wrap up the show. Maybe next time um, Janet will show the, the Power Princess video that you posted. Um, maybe what I can do is I can post this on our Facebook fan page for everybody to watch so, uh, so you won't miss it. Uh, but I do want to thank everybody for stopping by, and even though we had some technical glitches, I appreciate you guys actually coming back, which is kind of funny. Uh, because uh, I, I thought for sure I'd lose everybody after you know five minutes of waiting for the internet internet to turn back on. Um, so again, if you guys have any questions or, or comments or anything like that for me, um, make sure that you join a little bit before the show starts next week and leave some comments like you can see here. And um, that's what we'll do is we'll talk about whatever you guys want. So see you guys all next week.